Hey everyone, a happy Wednesday morning to you. I hope all is well and that you're having a wonderful day. And most importantly, I hope that you guys are staying safe out there, exercising precaution, you know, staying six feet away from others. You guys know what to do. You guys got this. And thank you so much for tuning in with me on this Bible in one year journey that I'm on. And I certainly hope that you've created a journey for yourself, especially in these trying times or are following along with me, of course. But I also pray that you all have your own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And if not, I'm going to say a prayer at the end and you can follow along with me if you decide to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior. Well, let's get started with these tea and treats. Um, I'm drinking pomegranate pizzazz tea today. And to pair with that, I have these strawberry and cream cheese pies and I have an apple pie in the middle. One of the people following along with me asked how many teas that I have, and I have about 20, you guys. I just love a variety of teas, and um, this particular one is the Bigelow brand, and you can get that from your local grocery store. Um, my sister-in-law gave me a brand that was called Celestial Seasonings, and you can also get that from your local grocery store. Um, I love Celestial Seasonings as well because they have a lot of nice and strong fruity flavors, and I love the fruity flavors. All right, the benefits of this particular tea is that it reduces blood pressure and overall cholesterol levels, it reduces inflammation, it aids in weight loss, and it boosts heart health. But before I eat, let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this drink and food, for the help and nourishment of my body, for Christ's sake, and I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with wisdom and understanding as I'm refreshed by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you guys know of any delicious foods that you'd like me to try, please comment below and let me know. I definitely love um, trying a variety of different foods too. So I'm definitely open to options and suggestions. Now I have a verse that I want to read to you guys. It comes from Jeremiah 33, 6 that can offer you peace during this pandemic. It says, nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. So yeah, let's just reflect and meditate on these powerful promises because the Lord's going to take care of it. All right, you guys go get your tea and sip with me. I'm going to get started. I just finished reading 2 Kings chapter 3 yesterday where I read about the war with Moab and the intercession with Elisha. And today I'm on day 109 of Bible in one year. So I am, we are in the wonderful storybook of 2 Kings. So I'm going to be reading 2 Kings chapter 4 and chapter 5. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels, do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her. And she poured it out, and it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Now it happened one day that Elisha, 
went to Shinnom, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was, as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please, let us make a small upper room on the wall, and let us put a bed for him there, and a table and a chair and a lampstand. So it will be, whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there, and he turned into the upper room and lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call the Shunammite woman. When he had called her, he stood before him. Then he said to him, Say now to her, Look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Actually, she has no son, and her husband is old. So he said, Call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, About this time next year you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elisha had told her. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, the reapers, and he said to his father, My head, my head. So he said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the tore upon him, and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys, that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, Why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, It is well. Then she saddled a donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was, when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to the servant Gehazi, Look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So she said, did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not answer him. But lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Now Gehazi went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore he went back to meet him and told him, saying, The child has not awakened. Then Elisha came into the house. There was a child lying dead on his bed. He went in, therefore, shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his mouth his eyes and his eyes and his hands on his hands and he stretched himself on the child and the flesh of the child became warm he returned and walked back and forth in the house and again went up and stretched himself out on him then the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes and he called Gehazi and said call this Shunammite woman so he called her and when she came in to him he said pick up your son so she went in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. And Elijah returned to Gilgal, and there was a famine in the land. Now the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said to his servant, Put on the large pot of boil stew for the sons of the prophets. So one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered from it a lotful of wild girds, and came and sliced them into the pot of stew though they did not know what they were. Then they served it to the men to eat. 
Now it happened as they were eating the stew that they cried out and said, Man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat it. So he said, Then bring some flour, and he put it into the pot and said, Serve it to the people, that they may eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. Then a man came from Baal Shalisha and brought the man of God bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley bread, and newly ripened grain in his knapsack. And he said, Give it to the people that they may eat. But his servant said, What? Shall I set this before one hundred men? He said again, Give it to the people that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left over. So he set it before them, and they ate and had some left over, according to the word of the Lord. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 1 through 27. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, if only my master were the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus said the girl who was from the land of Israel. Then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten charges of clothing. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, now be advised when this letter comes to you that I have sent Naaman my servant to you that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. So it was when Elisha the man of God heard the king of Israel had torn his clothes that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elijah's house. And Elijah sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, if he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the Farfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean. So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and came and stood before him. And he said, indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now, therefore, please take a gift from your servant. But he said, As the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. So Naaman said, Then if not, please let your servant be given two mule loads of earth for your servant. We'll no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifice to other gods, but to the Lord. Yet in this thing may the Lord pardon your servant when my master goes into the temple of Rimmon to worship there. And he leans on my hand, and I bow down in the temple of Rimmon. When I bow down in the temple of Rimmon, may the Lord please pardon your servant in this thing. Then he said to him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a short distance. But Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, the man of God, said, Look, my master has spared Naaman, the Syrian, while not receiving from his hands what he brought. But as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. So Gehazi pursued Naaman. When Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him and said, 
is all well? And he said, all is well. My master has sent me, saying, Indeed, just now two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two charges of garments. So Naaman said, Please take two talents. And he urged him, and bowed two talents of silver and two bags with two char changes of garments, and handed them to two of his servants, and they carried them on ahead of him. When he came to the citadel, he took them from their hand and stored them away in the house. Then he let the men go, and they departed. Now he went in and stood before his master, Elijah, and said to him, Where did you go, Gehazi? And he said, Your servant did not go anywhere. Then he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from the presence, leprous and white as snow. And that concludes today's reading. Now it says in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 17, But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elisha had told her. God loves to bless his obedient people with gifts for beyond anything they could ever hope for or imagine. Now, if you have any questions about today's reading, please comment below and I will get back with you as soon as I can. And I did ask you guys that if you decided to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, then I'm going to say a prayer right now and you can pray after me. So bow your heads and pray if you decide to make this decision. Heavenly Father, I come to you right now asking you for the forgiveness of my sins. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is your son. And that he died on the cross at Calvary that I might be forgiven. And have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Father, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. And I come to you right now asking you to come into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins and will worship you all the days of my life. Because your word is truth, I confess with my mouth that I am born again. And cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer you just made, one of the best decisions of your life, you can rest assured that your name is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you can um, spend eternity in heaven with Jesus Christ. Now, go out and tell others what the Lord has done for you. And thank you guys so much for tuning in and being here with me on Time with Tiffy. I sure do hope you enjoyed today's reading. Please remember to share, comment, like, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to Time with Tiffy, where we sip on tea so flavory, eat treats so savory, and enjoy reading books of the Bible during Bible in one year. You guys have a blessed day. Until next time.